Who ever said that e-begging never benefited the world? Actually, I probably said that, but in at least one circumstance, it is now benefiting you. I think last week I did a little test live stream, and one of the things I noted as an aside is that it sure would be nice if the channel, meaning me, but I mean also the channel, had a 1080p display to record on. Now that's because when I upload my videos, I used to have, well I still have, that monitor over there, I'm sorry, my room is a mess. I, I didn't even realize. I've been organizing things, but um, um, I have this old TV that I've been using and recording videos on, and it's at a resolution. It's like 1680 by 1050, something really weird like that. And that resolution is just not compatible with YouTube at all. So when I upload a screencast, all of my screencasts, when I upload them, YouTube takes that resolution and like distorts it and resizes it to like, 11 something by 720 or something really weird. So all of my all of my videos have been like that, all my screencasts at least. So I mentioned in this live stream, it sure would be nice if you guys want to donate to the channel to get me a 1080p display because it'll benefit me because it's nice to have a bigger display, but it also benefits every single video I do because you now would have full 1080p. Now, as you may be noticing, you might be watching this in 1080p, or at least there is now a 1080p resolution available because someone bit the bait and volunteered this guy, um, Hinock, Hinock S, I think. He said, I'll tell you what, I like your channel, I've benefited a lot from it. I have some, he had some kind of online store credits or Amazon points, I don't even know, but he said, send me a reasonably priced screen and I will buy it for you. So the one I sent him, I had to do research. I actually don't know anything about screens or like screen technology, so I had to do reading. But eventually the one I decided on is this Think Vision. It is it's on the cheaper end, but it is still fantastic quality. I'll talk about this. So this is going to be sort of a review video. It's sort of an announcement announcing we're doing 1080p now, but also a review. Um, so I got this thing. I've been using it. it. It came in pretty quickly. I think it was shipped by Amazon. I'm not a big friend of Amazon, not a big fan. Don't use it myself, but um, they do have really fast shipping. I was really surprised at it. Um, but it came, I've been using it for a couple days, and it is fantastic. Um, now, let's see. Anyway, so l let me give you, actually, I, I took some pictures of it. I was thinking about doing an unboxing video, but that's like the absolute state of YouTube. You know, I, I don't like those things. But it came in came this package. I had it sent to s some other place that I could pick up. I don't like giving people my own address, obviously. But, um... You know, I had it sent to another place, and I brought it back, and it, it was actually really lightweight. I w was not expecting it, because, again, I have this huge old TV that I've been using, and that's the monitor I'm used to. Uh, came in a couple pieces. Now, I one of the reasons... I, I got this for a couple of reasons. One, of course, it's 1080p. One, it's an IPS panel, which I had to read up on what that actually means, but I am glad that I chose an IPS panel. And it also has a display port as opposed to HDMI. Now, the more expensive Think Visions, I think they'll usually have DisplayPort and HDMI, but this one is supposed to be, you know, more of the bare bones, more minimal one the, on the cheaper end. So it comes with just VGA and DisplayPort. Now, those are exactly the ports that I need. ThinkPads have DisplayPorts. That's why I need them. I don't really care that much on HDMI. Whenever I use HDMI, I have to use an adapter because, you know, I don't have an HDMI plug on my ThinkPad. Although I think more modern ThinkPads have HDMI. I don't know. But that's one of the reasons I got this specific one. But, I mean, if you really wanted this, you could get an HDMI adapter and it'd probably work fine. Mm. So I got it. Um, just as some random pictures. So it um, has a little cord thing for the... All right, let me flip that around. I didn't even notice that... Uh, yeah, so it has a little thing for you to put cords through and other stuff like that and uh, it's generally so the build quality I will say uh, the build quality of the monitor is I well I'll, I haven't mentioned it yet, but I rate the screen 10 out of 10 the screen is fantastic the build quality of the like the plastic and all that stuff isn't super great I mean, it's not it's not like breakable. It's not like falling apart, but it's not it's not super stable I mean, it, it's not gonna fall over but uh, if you really push on it uh, I mean, it just doesn't have, like, the build that, you know, you might want from... It, it's pretty much its own price. We'll just say that. Um, but it's what it, it's what I expected. But the view of it is fantastic. Now, first off, in terms of resolution, as I said, I'm using this... I used to use this weird monitor, 6-something by 1050, and it... YouTube, I would record screencasts and that, upload them to YouTube, and they would be mutilated into this weird resolution. 
Um, also, the screen, despite the, this is my old screen, and this is my new one, and despite the fact that this one is much bigger, uh, this one has a much better resolution. And I actually like that it is small. I got one of the smaller ones. I think it's like 21 inches or something. And I like that if I had, like, I, I, I like not having to turn my head all over the place. Um, I like being relatively close. So I think it fits me very well. I don't know if I could handle two more inches. But um, uh, so if you compare it to my other screen, well, actually, this isn't very good because it's behind it. But the new screen is actually wider physically than the old one, although it is, it is also shorter. Um, but uh, I tried to take some pictures here. Again, I got an IPS panel. I had to do some research into what this is, but it is supposed to, I mean, most of you guys probably know. You probably know more than me about this kind of stuff, but um, those of you who know this kind of stuff, uh, you know, IPS panels, they're supposed to be perfect co color fidelity or more or less perfect, and um, it, it, they look fantastic. I tried to take some pictures here to show you what they actually look like. In fact, I even installed NeoFetch just so I could take one of these stereotypical pictures, but the color does just not show up. Like in real life, it looks fantastic. It doesn't, my camera just was not capturing it here, um, but it is absolutely wonderful. So apparently IPS displays or panels or whatever, um, they're, they're the best in terms of color fidelity, but if you're like a gamer or something, uh, since the IPS panels, I think, have a lower hertz rate or update rate or something, uh, if you're a gamer, you might not want to use them or something. That That's to my understanding, but this lo it looks, honestly, the screen in real life, again, it doesn't look good in these images, frankly, but in real life, um, the screen looks fantastic. It is just bursting with color. Now, I actually have an IPS display on my ThinkPad, and I had always wondered, I mean, I didn't know anything about it. I sort of knew it was an IPS display, but I had always wondered why is my ThinkPad so vivid? I'd plug it up to screens and the bigger screens would always be nastier and in worse color, but apparently I, it's the IPS thing. And I also took a picture of myself, uh, as you can see. Um, the, you might notice I probably should have shaved because now my picture down here is going to appear in a better resolution just because, you know, the screen is bigger, so my webcam, which I think takes up a certain, I forget how I wrote the script, but I think it takes up a certain percentage of the screen. So I will now appear in slightly higher def. So I'm going to have to work on that lighting, you know? I don't know if I like this lighting. I should probably shave. I haven't shaved in a couple days, but anyway, so that's about it. So again, thanks to Hanok S for uh, have buying, not just me, but all of you, this display, because everyone from now on, all my screencasts, unless I'm just on my laptop somewhere, but all my screencasts I record at home are gonna be 1080p. So, of course, you can still watch them in 720 if you want or something like that, if you think it's bloat to have 1080p, but... Um, oh, and one other thing. So every once in a while I'd get someone asking me a question about, is it worth it? Is it worth it to use a tiling window manager if you don't have 1080p or if you don't have a widescreen display? And I was always confused by that because I've used tiling window managers even on my um, X60 ThinkPad, which, you know, I don't even know what the resolution of it. I mean, it's basically like 100 by 500 or something. It's, or, well, no, it's one of those uh, four by three displays. Um, so I, I'm, I'm used to using tiling window managers on that. And of course, they're fantastic there as well. But I noticed, I mean, I have 400 more pixels in terms of width now. So I realized like how much more I can get from a tiling window manager. Like I can actually have three columns of stuff and be able to read all of them very well. Um, so that is something that uh, on my other screen, my big, my big fat screen, which is actually ironically worse, uh, that had fewer pixels, you couldn't really do that. Or it was harder to do that, so. Well, anyway, that's about it. So just a random announcement. So you can now look forward to my videos in 1080p. Again, thanks, Hinnock. Uh, I think that's an East African name. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, give him some upcomings if he posts in the comments. But um, well, I'll see you guys next time.